Good afternoon, everyone. This is Steve Bonner from the National Weather Service in Spokane, and I hope everyone is doing well. Given the lack of our spring meetings uh, from our current situation we're in, I wanted to go ahead and get a uh, seasonal outlook recorded for this uh, upcoming fire season. So we'll start off here with our water year precipitation. So since October 1st through the current uh, week, and we can see that there is uh, quite a uh, deficit in our precipitation for much of central and eastern Washington, as well as expanding into central Idaho panhandle. Uh, the, some, the areas that have done the best over the uh, time period has been the, uh, the immediate Cascade Crest, uh, down around the Blue Mountains, and up into the far north panhandle. When we look at those deficits or precipitation amounts, and rank them compared to 1895 to 2010. Uh, we can see that much of central uh, Washington down into Oregon and Northern California is in its bottom 10% of precipitation. And one contributor to that would be our storm track through much of the winter. Uh, it came through with a lot of westerly flow. So when it wasn't in British Columbia where it was positioned a lot of the times, it would come through, squeeze out a lot of the precipitation along the Cascade Crest give us a pronounced rain shadow in the lee of the Cascades. And then at times, the frontal systems would hit northeast Washington, north Idaho, where we see less of a deficit, and then quickly move down into the Blue Mountains and further south. And so when we look at how much precipitation are we uh, short for this time period, the areas in yellow here are roughly about one to four inches. As we get into the oranges up in Okanagan County and Chelan County, uh, we are looking at about four to eight inches in spots, and then it gets much worse as you look into western Oregon, northern California, with amounts greater than a foot. If we uh, dig into some, some sample points here, uh, OMAC, for instance, is short by about six and a half inches. As we get down towards Moses Lake and Wenatchee, uh, they're about two and three quarters to three inches. And then as we get over to Spokane and Deer Park, that's about two to two and a half inches. But if we take a look at our mountain snowpack, however, we do see a little bit different story here. Um, much of our basins uh, are running about 90 to 120 percent of normal for Washington and North Idaho. The exception being in the basin there with the Wenatchee uh, Mountains. And that's kind of the case into Oregon as well until you get down into the southwest. But does this really tell the whole story? Well, if we look at some individual snow tells here in the Wenatchee Mountains, uh, Blewett Pass, and the way you look at this is here at black line is the current um, amount of moisture in the snowpack. Green lines would be what's no a normal curve. And so here you can see that the snowpack uh, is about to run out there, or at least the moisture. Uh, and just some, some numbers to throw out there, they have about 1.3 inches left in that snowpack, where at this time of year, they should be right around 10 inches. But that is on a south aspect, and so that's what's really contributing to that. As you get into another snow tell site in the Wenatchee Mountains, Upper Wheeler, which sits in a bowl on a slight north aspect, uh, you can see conditions are much different there, and the snowpack is much slower to come off. Um, that's pretty much the same story as you get further into the uh, central and northern Cascades as well. Uh, up into the Chelan Mountains, uh, I see the same signal for Pope Ridge. Um, but then as you get close to the Cascade Crest like Lyman Lake, things are running right around normal. And a very similar uh, story is told as you go further north, uh, up the north fork of the Salmon Creek from Conconoli. Again, that's another south aspect. Uh, that is running about five inches shy of where it should be for this time of year. So it's coming off pretty quick on that south aspect as well. Uh, but as you get into the headwaters of the Stahican River, uh, it's right around normal, if not a little bit more. So now as we get over into the Okanagan Highlands, uh, conditions up along the Canadian border at Centennial Butte uh, were running much above normal for a while there. But, but the dry weather of late have started to come in back in check. And then as you get further south uh, in some areas, this is Moses Mountain down near the Colville Indian Reservation. Um, they're about three, four inches shy of where they should be uh, for this time of year. 
And then moving further north, uh, east into North Idaho, and this is pretty representative of the northeast mountains of Washington as well. Uh, conditions are running at, if not above normal, for our snowpack in the mountains. Um, maybe the one exception would be down into Shoshone County. Um, the upper snow tells are doing okay, but as you get to about 3,500 feet or lower, uh, it is starting to come off a little bit quicker than normal. And so you may have noticed here in the last few weeks, we've had several very dry systems, uh, fairly cool as well, but very dry. We've had RHs uh, in the teens and 20s for a lot of uh, periods of central Washington and even into eastern Washington. Uh, that contributed to some blowing dust that we saw last Saturday as well. And so the deficits um, continue to pile up uh, here in the last um, 30 days when we should start to see some, some decent precipitation in the spring. And so what that resulted in was uh, an expansion of the D2 or severe drought uh, up into north central Washington issued here just today, April 16th, on the latest uh, drought outlook. So we are now contending with uh, D2 severe drought for much of central Washington from about uh, the Okanagan Valley uh, down towards the Columbia River and into North Oregon uh, and as well as into Western Oregon and Northern California. When we compare that to where we were in April uh, this time last year, um, a little bit different story for sure. We had some dry conditions up in the North Cascades, uh, abnormally dry for the Northern Mountains as well. Um, but we saw a, a fairly normal summer come through, and so those uh, dry conditions really didn't equate to a whole lot of uh, large fires. And just to give some um, uh, comparison to uh, one of our, our big fire years, 2015, uh, where we were as far as the drought situation at this time of year, um, this is what it looked like. So you can see there wasn't a whole lot of drought uh, at that time in April, um, but it's just kind of a good indication of how things could change for the worse, you know, or for the better as we go through time here. And so as far as the outlook through June, uh, right now the outlook is for the drought conditions to persist. Um, not a whole lot of signal of some very wet conditions coming in at this point. Okay, so when we start to look out uh, at the spring and summer months for an indication of what may come, first thing we kind of do is look at the uh, ENSO index here. So the black line is what's happened. So we've been sitting here right about point, positive 0 0.5 through much of the winter or what we call neutral conditions. And the climate models continue to indicate neutral conditions hovering around zero, if not a tendency to get to a kind of cooler neutral conditions as we go into the fall and winter months. So what we do is we take uh, years and look back at the spring and summer months um, for when we went from a neutral winter into a neutral summer. And so you can see the eight years there listed up top and run a uh, composite of those. And so as far as temperatures, um, there are some indication for this uh, method of, of near to slightly above normal temperatures uh, for areas of the Northwest, uh, maybe a little bit more extreme as you get into Western Washington. But as far as the precipitation anomalies, uh, not much going on as far as Central and Eastern Washington and North Idaho, um, and a little bit more of a wetter signal as you get towards the coast. How much does this uh, have a strong correlation? It's tough to say. Uh, it did pretty well last year, um, mainly for the summer months, not necessarily for the spring, uh, but it is you know, another tool in the toolbox. And when we look at the climate models here, uh, this is for the April, May, June time period. Um, so a, a three month average, uh, it is continuing to show uh, chances odds for near to above normal temperatures, something it's been showing for about five, eight years now. Um, but the precipitation anomalies here um, are kind of concerning, showing drier than normal conditions for at least the western portions of Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and, and going slightly inland. Less of a signal as you get into northeast Washington, North Idaho. And so what I think it's locking on is, is a persistent ridge of high pressure sitting over the coast where it's been for the last few weeks here. And the storm track mainly coming around and going down through the northern plains 
And so maybe if this shifts slightly, you know, we get a little bit more storm systems coming in, clipping us, but those typically aren't wet with that trajectory. And the Climate Prediction Center for this time period would uh, agree uh, odds favor near to above normal temperatures and a fairly strong signal for below normal precipitation there down in Oregon and then to portions of Washington. Uh, one other thing we kind of started to look at here would be another global uh, oscillation called the Arctic Oscillation. And when you can put that together with the ENSO, um, they've run some studies. And just to show, uh, when we look at the conditions that are neutral ENSO and positive AO, which is where we are right now, um, there were, out of the average of 909 days, uh, kind of a dry anomaly for Western Oregon and Northern California. So that does add some uh, confidence for that. Now we move into the summer months, uh, we are looking at the composite here for just ENSO. And so that would kind of favor again um, near to above normal temperatures for much of the northwestern U.S. But as we look at precipitation, uh, not much of, of a signal, um, maybe a slight wet signal for some of the mountain areas along the Cascade Crest and North Idaho. The climate models for that time period uh, once again, continue to in indicate above normal temperatures. Uh, but one thing here is it's showing a fairly dry signal for the northwestern U.S. And I can say that this has been a consistent signal for the last four runs. So that does add some confidence that we are going into potentially a drier than normal summer. Uh, we also look for the, where the, the monsoon uh, moisture may impact uh, with these time frame as well. And it's kind of showing more of the uh, monsoon impacts down over the Four Corners regions. So that may indicate a more suppressed monsoon um, season once again, kind of like similar to what we saw last year. And so the Climate Prediction Center also is agreeing with the drier than normal conditions for the summer. At least that's the tendency right now and warmer. And when we look at the, um, the two oscillations globally, uh, they don't show much of a signal for the Northwest, and even if we kind of go into a negative Arctic Oscillation, um, there's very little signal, if not drier than normal conditions, up there along western uh, Montana and the northern Rockies. And so at this point, to predict the services, uh, outlooks for June uh, doesn't show shows normal conditions uh, for the Northwest, but as we get into July, um, you can see the uh, above normal uh, threat for wildland fires and potential for some larger fires. Um, probably really honing in on some of those dry drought conditions uh, that are setting in right now. So it's definitely something we're going to have to keep an eye on. And so we put all this together and this is what we're looking at. Uh, an average early start for the basin and grasslands early to mid-June. Then in the normal cheatgrass crop given the deficiencies in our soil moisture and our emerging drought. For the Cascade Mountains and the Okanagan Highlands to about Sherman Pass, uh, near to early start for the lower slopes and the south aspects, given the snow coming off earlier, that would be about early to mid-July. Near normal start for mid and upper slopes, which is about mid to late July. And if this drought continues to worsen, so you know, we're going to have to keep an eye out for extreme burn conditions and potentially large fires. Uh, as we get closer to the Cascade Crest, however, uh, we should see a normal to even late start um, for those areas up there, given the above normal snowfall. Uh, as we get into the Colville National Forest, east of Sherman Pass, and into North Idaho, uh, right now we're looking for normal conditions, late July to early August, maybe locally sooner for those south aspects of Southern Stevens, Ponderay counties, uh, and Ferry County as well. Uh, and I would say that there's an elevated risk for large fires in July and August with this emergent drought and the climate projections for that hot, dry summer could lead to a late season as well if it remains dry well into September. And early indications suggest another year suppressed monsoon impacts for the Northwest. The average number of starts is roughly about 364 for lightning. And near to above normal acres for the basin grasslands, Cascades and Okanagan Highlands, and normal acres for the Northeast Washington and North Idaho. Uh, when we do look at those analog years for the amount of acreage, uh, for the most part, our average is about 140,000. So if this holds any correlation, um, a lot of the early years back in the 80s and 90s, we did have below normal acres in neutral to neutral summer, or winter to summers. Uh, but here in the last decade or two, 
Um, even though some of those were below normal, they were still pr up there pretty high. So, you know, it's uh, it's tough to give a, a strong correlation. And with that, have a safe and healthy fire season. If you have any questions or anything else, please send me an email. Thank you.